Hey everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmutov and today I want to have some fun. Imagine you have a select element and it has a couple of options. It kind of looks like a sorting widget that you sometimes see on marketplace pages. I want to sort of items by name, maybe from A to Z or Z to A, maybe by price from lowest to highest or maybe highest to lowest. So we can select it as a user, right? And every time you select, there is an event listener attached to the select and it prints the target value of a select element. And then it says you want to sort by name depending on the target value. The target value comes from the option elements. So if you select A to Z, the value that you will see inside the event listener is A to Z. And so we'll just print sorting by name A to Z. A to Z prints it. And so we have switch statement with four valid cases. And just to be sure, because we are good developers, we're writing defensive code. We have a default case that just says, no, it's an error. I don't know how to sort for this particular option value. Okay, so it's easy to select Z to A kind of a happy path. Right, we get the element, we select Z to A, and once we select it, well, we can see it in the page, but also we can check the select element value Z to A. Uh, same thing we can do for the price uh, option. Okay, so if we select low to high option, then the select should have and that particular option selected. So how do we reach the default case? Well, unfortunately, this is a problem of end-to-end -end tests. It's hard to reach the edge cases for error handling if a page is actually set up correctly, right? In our case, we have only the valid options in our select element, meaning the default case is unreachable. But here's where Cypress tests come into play. They run in a browser and they have direct access to the DOM. So usually we just query the DOM or we use Cypress commands to interact with elements. But we can also modify the page to suit our needs. So in this case, when we get an element with ID sort, these commands I get yields a jQuery object. We can invoke a jQuery method append and we can give a string to add a new option, for example, option value, nope, nope, and close the option string. So what happens then? If you look at the element, all of a sudden it got a new option element as a child of select that your code has no idea exists. So once we invoke this, let me just show the incorrect way of doing this and then I'll explain why. We can select this new value nope. Now this fails and once it times out you will see why. It actually fails because there are more than a single option. Notice how many nopes were added. The underlying reason is Cypress version 12 changed sci invoke command and designated it to be a query. Meaning that once you try to select nope, if that nope is not there yet it will call it again. But at that point, the first node will be added. So now you have two nodes and you keep calling again and again append because now you cannot select a single node. Okay, because there's more than one matching value. So just to make it work, you have to separate and just invoke append and then query the element again so that you don't add multiple node elements and you can still select it. So let's just confirm that we have the right element. Should have value. Nope. So that works. And just as a kind of tip, I have my Cypress map plugin. Cypress map plugin is a library of reusable queries for Cypress, so kind of like a missing toolbox. But there is one command there called invoke once that prevents this kind of loop. And now you can add or append new child element and immediately select because you will not rerun this append. All right. So we confirm that we can select invalid option, but what about console error, right? We want to confirm 
that it gets called with a right string, a noun sort or a knob. So let's do this. So before we act, we can say, give me the window to the application. It has console object as a property. So you get this console object and you can spy on the console object and its error method and give it an alias. So now, every time we select invalid option, we see that our spy was really called. So let's confirm it. So get the spy by its alias and check should have been called once or maybe called once with nope. Perfect. So this is how you can modify the page before you interact with from your test to reach that error handling code that otherwise would be unreachable. For more examples like this, check out my Cypress examples website.